So, my hot take is, I don't think that Nintendo Switch games are going to be as, as expensive as people think they're going to be. But this also goes for PS4 as well. I'm not going to count Xbox games because I don't think that Xbox games are going to be expensive at all. But I don't, I don't, I don't feel the the exact same way that I felt a couple of weeks ago. Now, and I'll explain why. Um, I I I I wrote down some notes, and I I said that I don't think Nintendo Switch will be, let's say, Super Nintendo rare, because I think a lot of people are are thinking that that's that's going to happen. But what sparked this was I was on Reddit one day, and I don't even know why I was on Reddit. Um, in this particular, I, I don't know what they're called. Subreddits is what they're called or whatever. And it was a subreddit called Nintendo Switch Collecting. And when I click, I, I just had to click on it to see what was inside. And the first thing that pops up on the screen is uh, collection update. And this one person had, I, let me see. It was, I think they said they had... 2200 2200 switch games and it was oh my just a, God. and it was just a bookshelf full of all this red but it, it was actually three bookshelves together with smaller ikea shelves around it with just 2200 switch games and it got me thinking it was it was like i was like i i wonder how many other more people in this same chat have this exact same number um, but one of the things that dawned on me was when you go on YouTube and if you just type in the words video game collecting, it's mostly switch. It's like switch this, switch that. And I think that the, the hobby, I wouldn't say the hobby switch collecting has too many speculative collectors. Um, and what happens is. If you have too many if you have too many people speculating on a market that might happen, that means that everybody who is already collecting that's in the market already has everything. So by the time the market is supposed to be where it's supposed to be and the prices are supposed to be up, they're actually going to be down because no one's buying everything because they bought it all already. Um the other thing is that I really started paying attention to is I think that the Switch being region free kind of hurts the console in terms of I I wouldn't say it hurts the console in being collect collectible because you can collect video games without it worrying about you know price and all that stuff. But I know a lot of people speculate because they want the pr a lot of a lot of collectors want the price to go up. Um, but with it being region free, that means that. You can collect North American, but if you can't find the North American version because it's too expensive, you can just buy two more other regions because they all have the same English in it. Um, so I think the console being region-free kind of hurts the growth of the price that people are speculating that might happen. Um, the next thing that I noticed was that the Switch actually has too many games. It has way too many titles. And what I did was I kind of started looking back at all the other console generations. And the Nintendo NES that came out in what, 1988 has 807, was it? No, 685 games, I think it has total. And that's North American. Then you have Super Nintendo that has, what, 700 and something odd games and 86 games. 80, 86 of those games are not U.S. They're, 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 they're imports or, you know, Japan exclusive. And then I looked at, I, I started, I, I kept going up to like PlayStation. PlayStation, like N64 has 500 games, 500 plus games or whatever it is. Um, PlayStation 1 has about 800 games. Then when you go up to PlayStation 2, PlayStation 2 has about 2,000. And then you keep going to Xbox or PlayStation 3, it's about 4,000 around there, 3,000. When you get to the Nintendo Switch, the, the, I didn't even know this, but I had to look it up. The Nintendo Switch has 11,000 11, titles plus. And those are all physical? Yeah. Oh my God. So, so... 
I I I highly doubt that this console is going to be uh expensive like oh my god you got to you got to get this game and and the other problem too that I notice is that there's too many people making videos saying you should probably buy this because <laughs> it's probably going to be this later on and when you do that you have all those people go out and buy it and then the people that actually buy it they don't need it when it gets rare because they told everybody else to buy it you see what I'm saying? So it's yeah. <laughs> so I think that if you're going to collect for the Switch, collect for the Switch because there's games on it that you want to play and that you enjoy. Um, but I think if you're collecting because you think the price is going to spike, I don't think that would probably be a good idea. Um, now there are some games that are. I I would say there are some games that's like weird, like um, what's that? Like the Messenger. That's a, that's a pretty expensive game, and I'm not sure why. I keep trying to like look up why it's rare, but um, I just don't, I just don't see why it's rare. Um, but I will say this: um, one of the other things that kind of has me worried, um, um, I, w- I would say it only has me worried because I, I like importing. Um, but I started to notice that there's like weird um, things happening where. Um, companies are removing the english from japanese releases really yeah there's um there was a what was it uh, assault suit leonos 2 was supposed to have an english release and then they removed it and now what's it called uh limited run is going to be um uh, printing that game in the u.s release and it's going to have english um then i found out that there's this that there's this one game it's a uh, goblin slayer game that a lot of people wanted to play the japanese release had english and when people pre-ordered it I, there's like an update that removes the english from the game so if if they're able to remove games um um in uh different languages from games i think that's something to be worried about as a import collector but um, I think for games like like Assault Suit Leonos or Platformer, if they remove the English, it doesn't really bother me. If they remove it from a shmup, it doesn't really bother me. Um, because I feel like you can just play those games without it, and we've done it for years. But for other games, it 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 kind of worries me. RPGs and other platformers with story, you know, in depth stories. Um, the removal of English is is kind of worrying, but. That's my hot take, is that I don't think it's going to be... If we continue on this road... Uh, I mean, we give our advice as well, so we're, we're lumped in that, <laughs> but because we love talking about these games. But there's just this, this large influx of people talking about buying this game because it might be this, or, um, or too, many, too many speculative collectors. Because you also have people leaving other collecting hobbies to come into our hobby now too um people are dropping comic books to come into video game collecting or trading cards to come into video game collecting so that that that's my hot take i don't know how do you how, how, do, do, do you agree or do you disagree you know any any counter counter acts <laughs> well i mean you know there's a, a lot to uh to digest there Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll start with the, the point you ended with and so that's like removing in- English. I was not aware of that. Um, do you think it's actually like limited run, you know, cutting a deal with these publishers? Hey, get the English out of there and we'll release it in the U S like, is it a nefarious ploy by these, you know, FOMO publishers? That's a to... good question. Cause I, I wish I knew. I just, I, I remember I had assault suit Lanos. Uh, two pre-ordered. I'm I'm still gonna buy the game. I'm gonna get it on eBay because um, I refuse to purchase anything from Limited Run. But um, the game originally was going to be shipped with English. Um, and before they shipped it, um, they I, I was told that by a friend of mine who he runs a video game store. He was like, they're removing the English from the Japanese version because Limited Run is going to be selling it. And I actually looked it up and Limited Run is, yeah, they're, they're getting ready to start selling the game. Um, but um, the Goblin Slayer one is the one that worries me. 
because those games shipped with English and now they're removing it. So that that worries me because if you could just take out a language with like an update that that's going to suck later on if um they try to like you know restabilize certain markets, you know what I mean? Because I think that there is I think that there's a lot of there, there's an influx of people importing now, especially with Play Asia. Play Asia is huge. I remember a lot of people didn't know about Play Asia, but people a lot of people know about it now. Oh yeah, I mean, I remember discovering Play Asia in like 2006, 2007. Yeah, and I was the happiest guy. I was like, oh, finally, you know, it's it's easy to order from. They have yep. the the new releases. I used to, um, I actually used to get from them like uh, Japanese PlayStation Store codes. Mm-hmm. So I could go on and and like you know download the digital only games on the the yep. PS3 yep. back in 2007 when that was like a rare thing to actually you know have a Japanese account. Um, yeah, I've been with them for so long. God, I re- uh, I, re- I remember I remember finding out about Play Asia around the same time you did, and. I, I didn't tell anyone about it because I just felt like I was part of this secret club that didn't know about <laughs> about Play Asia. You know, it's just like this is my secret. What my friends come by is like, where do you get this stuff? It's like I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just loved it. I but but everybody knows about Play Asia now. You know. Well, I I, I do want to get back though to the the point you made about the Switch as such. Mm-hmm. Yes, because um, I think there was so much there. Yeah. Um, I agree. You know, you sent me a video a couple weeks ago where a guy was discussing that and it kind of opened my eyes to like, you know, has it all been a folly these last three years when I've really gone crazy (laughs) with (laughs) switch games? And I, I see the point. I didn't realize there were 11,000 games for the, (laughs) the switch. That is absolutely insane. And, uh, and again, I always say that's why people need to listen to this podcast because you get info like that that you know you hear nowhere else. Right. Um, yeah, I I see where you're coming from. I have a couple counterpoints that might hopefully uh, you know uh, lessen the blow <laughs> of <laughs> what this reality might be. Number one is I think when you know if the Switch Two mm-hmm. is backwards compatible. Um, you're still going to have a very long lifespan for the Switch and people who are going to want some of those games. And we've talked about this before. It's like the Switch performance is pretty bad in in, in a lot of games. So if, if mm-hmm. you know, from just speaking personally, like I have a lot of unopened games or games that I haven't really invested a ton of time in because when I've played it, I'm like, uh, I would just, I wish I could get a solid frame rate. Yeah. You know, Shin, Shin Megami Tensei five, I think is a good example. Like it's a excellent game, but boy, it chugs along. Yeah. Um, the one we were playing that, uh, what was that game? Uh, Bakaru, though we talked about it in the, in the winter, it was kind of like the Ganbari Goman spiritual successor. Yeah. 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 You know, the, the the shell, yeah. cell shaded, beautiful looking game, mm-hmm. but just horrible performance. Right. So I think if you have a backwards compatible switch to that, you know, basically puts all of the switch titles for lack of a better word in a performance mode where you can get 60 frames a second and it makes them look better, play better. I think for the games that matter, you are going to have a bit of a renaissance. Uh, now, to your point, some people may already have them, and they'll be so great, I'll unwrap them and, and play them. Um, but I think at least that will keep it relevant in people's minds and keep some degree of demand going. Uh, my second point would be, and again, this might be hoping against hope, is I feel like you know, when you collect, you're always hoping that the next generation is going to be the ones who will buy it. So it's not like you or me who, hey, we were, you know, obsessive 
collectors with uh, some discretionary income. So we're buying this or we're speculating on this game or that game. I, I, I want to believe it's, you know, the teenage kid these days or, you know, the kid who maybe got a switch when it came out in 2017 was a little cash strapped. Hey, they were in high school then. Now they're in college. They're going to start, you know, getting their first uh, real jobs and they might be like, oh, I couldn't, you know, I really love the Switch, but I only had a handful of games. Let me pick up this game. Let me try that game. Or the the kid who's even younger who's like, oh, my brother had a Switch and he wouldn't let me play it. And so now I'm now that I'm an adult, I'm going to collect. Like that's the market that I'm hoping I could sell to if I want to sell. Right. And not like, you know, down the road, like you and I'll be, you know, in our 50s and 60s and looking for someone else who's in their <laughs> 50s and 60s who you know, just happened to miss out on Proteus or something. <laughs> you want to buy this copy of Radiant Silver Gun? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think that's, I mean, look, <clears throat> when we when, when we got into collecting, or, you know, well, we've been collecting for a long time, but yeah, <laughs> you know, I'll, 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 I'll just speak for myself. Like when I was in my mid to late twenties, when I really started to be like, Oh, there's this, thing called youtube and there are collectors and i'm collecting maybe i should you know pay attention to this community um you know i was the younger person Mm -hmm. who might have bought the atari or the nes stuff that i remember but couldn't buy so i think the the question is can we keep up the nostalgia like i think there's a lot of work to be done in these eleven thousand games to say which ones are truly worth it? You know, which ones yeah. are are the gems? Like that hasn't been done yet. And yeah. so I'm hoping that someone, you know, probably younger and more skillful with uh, video editing than myself, uh, and with more time than myself, will sit down and do that. And I just hope that out of the, I don't know how many Switch games I have. I know you went through yours in a video at some point, but I can call it up here. Let's say I have <laughs> a, 150 Switch games. You know, I hope... Oh, sorry, hmm. I have a 146. Um, 146. I don't know I, I have. <laughs> I think you're up to 500. No, um, not up to that much. But, uh, you know, could 30 of them... 226? Yeah. Okay. Could 30 or 40 of them be those heavy hitters that people will want. Mm. That's that's my hope. I I think that the heavy hitters exist for sure. Um the problem the 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 problem that I'm having, well, I guess the problem that I'm I have time seeing. I have I I have, I have I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> the prob- the problem that I'm I'm running into is there's games, but there's too many games that you can get elsewhere. And that's and and I think that's the problem that I'm having. That's why I even mentioned the PS4 because, um, say that a person a person has to really want to collect for Switch, but I think that's one of the the issues that's that a lot of sellers are going to run into, is that there's too many options. Um, with the Super Nintendo, there's not a lot of games that are on the Sega Genesis that are also on the Super Nintendo. And that's why I commanded, you know, those price points. Like, l- like, let's just take, like, the Trails game that I just bought. It's on, what? It's on Switch, PS4, PS5, and Steam. And then you have to take that into account. Like, how many other games do I have in my collection that's on all four of those platforms? You know? Yeah, that is, and, that is true. And it's, um, that's why I, I think, like, a lot of people, they're, they're, but, like, I, I saw a lot of people. Um, I even mentioned it in the in the chat. I said, you know, hey, this game Hades. You know, if you're, it's it's out of print. If you want to go go ahead and grab it, you know, just grab it now on the Switch. You know, but the thing is, is that you don't really have to grab it on the Switch. <laughs> you can grab it on Steam, or you can grab it on PS4, or Xbox, or whatever other console it's on. Um, and I think that's going to cause like a really weird problem. Like you're going to have a bunch of people with a bunch of switch games that they don't really care about but a lot of a lot of cuz put it like this a lot of people who 
who make videos i'm you know what that's generalizing there are a lot of collectors who buy into the switch because they hope that it will be something like the super nintendo you know but i i with the way that it's all the games are so spread out because the developers need to make their last buck i i just it's hard for me to see i think if you're if you're trying to collect for profit possibly i would say go from ps3 going down that yeah. that's my suggestion for sure i don't know i i guess my last point was that i'm, I'm trying to hold out hope and, uh, and you know, no I, and out, I i completely I'm, understand i completely because because we're, we're in the same boat like we we both love the switch we both love to collect for the switch so i understand um, I, I wonder if the switch and I think the switch too, but you know, this whole family of switch games, will this be the swan song for physical media? You know, I think we are going to approach a day where Xbox and PlayStation will take the digital turn and it's just like, you know, we are not printing games anymore. Speaking of that. <laughs> I don't think that it's okay. Do you rem all right, do you remember when I when I said I think some of my videos were are predicting the future? Because I made many videos of, many of them have, yes. <laughs> I, I made videos three years ago, four years ago, and and all of them have come true. So I I predicted in one of my videos, I forgot what it was video. Oh, it was it was a video called um, The Thing That Frightens Me About the PS5 or something like that. And I, in the video, I said that um, I feel like, was it that? No, I think it was a video called um, We're Not In a, a Console War Anymore. We're In a, we're in a Developer War. Um, that, I think that was the video. But the video basically says that... Um, I feel like Sony and Microsoft are going to compete for to grab developers and jump to the Steam. Uh, if if you had to picture that um, Xbox and and Sony are two boxers, Steam is the ring that they're boxing in, and and Nintendo is somewhere off doing its own thing. And I said that um, I. If 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 they if they go into this realm where they're fighting their own thing, they're fighting their own fight. I wouldn't be surprised if <clears throat> I said that I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo corners the market with JRPGs, and <laughs> and and um, eventually, if they stop, if they all go digital, um, Limited Run would have to make a game or their games on uh, what do you call them USB drives. With little uh. keychains or whatever. Two weeks ago, I found out that Limited Run has a game that's, or I think it was Limited Run. Some company makes is making a game where the game is on the PC version of the game is on a USB drive. Oh my god! I I I <laughs> couldn't believe it. I was like, when I said that, <laughs> I I wasn't thinking that it would actually come true. Well, yeah. I actually remember that video. That was uh, <laughs> some of your best work, and uh, yeah, that's um, it's that so is weird. Crazy. Even Nintendo is cornering the JRPG market. If Sony and Microsoft are fighting for Steam supremacy, it, like everything I said in that video is coming true. Yeah, and I, I think Sony and Microsoft have just started down that path. Yeah, um, definitely. But I mean, I you know the PlayStation Six or whatever the next Xbox is. I mean, I think I, I, we're we're moving to a point where you know they are not going to want to create physical versions, or if they do, they will be. Um, do you think they're going to want to? Do you think they're going to want to make consoles though? I think. Uh, I mean, I, I've heard a lot of sort of conflicting stories, like Microsoft supposedly wants you know game pass it's like you know you don't whatever hardware you have we're gonna have game pass streaming to your device um Jeez. but then i've also heard that um i think the guys on digital foundry you know were speculating that they might do uh, a kind of like <clears throat> 
I don't know, high end, you know, the Xbox will be the high end experience. So they'll still make a console, mm-hmm. um, it, you know, or it could be something like, uh, the steam machine where, you know, it's, uh, it's a full fledged PC, but you know, you can get, you know, these varying versions of it and one, you know, the super high end version will be the Xbox. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will try to, you know, completely blend, you know, or blur the lines between console and PC. Um, but still, that doesn't mean that they're going to produce games, you know, on physical media. PlayStation, I mean, at this point, I was, you don't, uh, you're, you're kind of anti PlayStation 5, right? You're not, you didn't, <laughs> didn't buy um, a PlayStation 5. I didn't, I did not purchase a PlayStation 5. I'm, I'm not anti Sony, but I just, I didn't see the reason to buy a PlayStation 5 it, because it's a I don't good know. decision. The PlayStation 4 is so, I, me personally, the PlayStation 4 is good enough for me. Yeah. I mean, I play my PlayStation 5 very infrequently. <clears throat> um, Mm-hmm. It's perhaps my least played console, but as you'll find out, because eventually we get all the consoles and all the games. So one day, yeah, yeah one, um, day. one day, you know, you put the physical media in and, you know, you're just basically, it's a download key, mm-hmm. yep. you know, whereas with the switch for the most part, you know, that game is on the switch and playable, right? You know, I, yes, occasionally you have to download an update, but to my knowledge, you can play the game without the update. Um, I'm the guy who always clicks yes on the update because I want the latest and greatest (laughs) version. Um, so I think, you know, if this is the swan song for physical media or if Nintendo is the last company who's going to keep the traditional publishing model Mm -hmm. and console model, um, I think there will be nostalgia for that for a long time.